What's up, people? One Nut Punch here. So, Sengoku Dynasty comes out tomorrow for 1.0 release access of this recording. Today is November 6th, tomorrow will be November 7th. And I wanted to check it out to see how the Daimyo update was going to be like, even after Kaitsen when they added the new combat system. So, they did quite a bit of stuff. For example, I wanted to show off running, because running used to be super fast, and you were kind of slidy and floaty, and now it's like more natural, and it's going at a constant speed. You do go through stamina pretty fast in this as well. Not just running, but also chopping with an axe, using a pickaxe for the mining, especially when you do like three or four hits and then you still have to get more. You start off with um, stone, then you go copper slash bronze, then you go to iron. There are some quests that you can go into the mines to get iron, but they tell you you can get a bronze pickaxe. There is none. And because of this reason, when it comes down, the quest lines are breaking every once in a while. I mean, even with 1.0, there's going to be issues. And they did state in the notes of the 1.0 release for Daimyo that they were going to be adding more stuff later after release. Still, they improved when it came down to the skills that you could acquire in the game. For example, combat, you can get the parrying attack or you can get a dash attack. You can also get harder attacks with heavy attack. Or you can get quicker attacks using the spear. You can also get... Reduce stamina use when it comes down to crafting I and mean, reducing the cost of stamina when it comes down to crafting buildings items or even being able to go out there and mine for trees stones and ore so there's a lot of different things you could use for the dynasty system not to mention you can give jobs that are a little bit more improved than what they were beforehand allowing your villagers to not only work but able to get more stuff that are way more difficult and laborious for you for example the two main things I'm having Aiko and another person that's part of my camp do is be able to get wood, which is conifer um, logs, and then another one, which is sticks. After about maybe an hour or two, they had about 200 conifer logs and 600 sticks, just one person. And I know before and then you were able to get multiple people in one spot. You have to do multiple different buildings in order for them to have their own individual places. For example, foraging, or rather the forager's hut that allows you to go out and find the gabo plant slash being able to give the job to one of the other villagers to go find food. And what that does essentially is that it stops you from going out and foraging food that takes a long time to do and has somebody else do it for you when you're going off and questing or being able to go out to the other side of the world to be able to talk to the monk at the temple so you can get more of the villager bells after every dynasty happens. I think it goes from 7 to 14 and 21 and beyond. I'm not sure after that. But he will give you a, a villager bell that allows you to go and make another village that's a pretty decent area or pretty decent radius. The other thing is that they changed combat. They allow you to do a faster attack every once in a while. Heavy attack with heavy swing. You could also parry slash block. Also do some dashing slash dodging. But they have the different styles and classes of enemy. They have bandit. They have looter. They have uh, Ashigaru. They have Ronin. And I think they have some settlements that actually have a lot of them. And this was something I was hoping for. Because when you played before 1.0, the Daimyo update, the only thing you would see is basically these small encampments that have one or two bandits in them. And they didn't have a bunch of different other people. There's a lot of people now on the map. There's other, like, animals you can see. You can skin them like bears or lions or um, the hares slash foxes. And then you can go to the shrines and get different things like uh, spirit for your monk experience by giving sake to Amaterasu or giving a cooked egg to Inari. And there are different shrines you could find across the entire area. The other change I liked about this one is that you could fight in first person. And that wasn't a thing beforehand because whenever you got into combat, it would put you into third person immediately. And then you'd go back into first person using the V key. Now you're able to fight in first person and try to get that first hand experience of when you're being attacked. Whether to dodge the attack or parry it. And I mean you could also block as well. But sometimes if you hold it down for too long the stamina will deplete very fast. And if they hit you with a heavy swing even more so. The other thing is there's ranged weapons like a half bow and short bow you can use with different arrows that I didn't see from before 1.0. They now have normal arrows, stone arrows. Copper arrows and iron arrows. I think they have bronze as well, but I haven't found tin yet because I know you need copper and tin to make bronze. And then you have these boxes that when you're done defeating some of these bandits or outlaws, they'll actually have more stuff in them. Money, candles, dice, and some other things. And that's pretty much what you're going to be needing to go out and sell to these other people at the uh, Iwasaki village or maybe even the temple of the monk that you have to talk to for the bell. The other thing when it comes down to this game is that it has some obnoxious things about it. There is some issues with questing. There is some issues with invisible walls blocking your way. And 
again, when it comes down to the game itself, is it worth $25? And personally, after the years of playing it from early access, seeing the combat system now, and then seeing them improve upon it, making the world probably bigger, and there is a lot of stuff to do. Yes, I would say it's definitely worth checking out. And I mean, even after playing it for so long, and coming back and seeing the Kaisen update, and then now the Daimyo, having all the villagers be more, like, interested or slash giving them more integration for the jobs that they need to do so that they stay happy, giving them more food so that they stay in the village rather than leave it, and then being able to go off and do my own thing, having more refugees join my village, and so on. It's a whole village management simulator. It's also a combat sim when it comes down to what people would do in, in those days of using spears, katanas, or being able to use the bow and arrow from far range. And I mean, I think depending upon the arrow, it does more damage. There are some bugs, there are some issues, and I did have some FPS issues earlier too when I played on mid to high settings. Even more so when it came down to rendering the different encampments and people. It would kind of buffer or it slow down, but I never had a crash. It was just a couple of slowdowns here and there, and hopefully they fix that later on. Before the end of this video, there's a couple things I forgot to talk about in the start of the video. The first is when it comes down to crafting. It is pretty monotonous after a while, but you need to get your village built up in order for your villagers to be able to do the jobs for you later. So having to go off and chopping a bunch of trees down, get sticks, get grass for bedding or mining big rocks for stone in order to get an entire building made. You want to get all your resources too, plus you need wood storage, rock storage for your building, so that you have more stuff to do to be able to make the different buildings you want at one time. If you have those storages, it'll actually go from not just your item inventory, but your inventory and your storage, so that if you have all the total together, then you can make the buildings for whatever you have left, from sticks, rocks, or even logs. The other thing when it comes down to combat, it does get kind of annoying when it comes down to blocking or dodging. Sometimes you get stuck under a rock or a tree will be there in front of you. And then, of course, the stamina meter is very small. So sometimes I have to enlarge the UI to know what the hell I'm looking at. But other than that, for $30 and 55 hours later, I've been liking Sengoku Dynasty's Daimyo update, as well as the previous updates like Kaisen when they add a new combat system. It does look a lot better, and it does have some issues, but I can see them flushing out later on post 1.0 release. But otherwise than that, I've been one nut punch, and this has been the Sengoku Dynasty 1.0 release video, and I'm going to be streaming it later on tomorrow at November 7th. About 11 a.m. CST would be my time I normally get on for streaming. But anyway, I've been one nut punch, and this has been the other video I've been making to do for this week. I got some other ones on the way, like Tactical Assault VR, talking about the Hammerfell operations, the new weapons they added, as well as Blade and Sorcery's new AI update, where the AI is a lot more fluid faster and they have finishers and combos that they do besides shield bash but anyway like i said this has been sengoku dynasty thanks for watching i'll see you later